back in here today getting ready to start the inspection on the annual. Last video we looked at the airworthiness directives, but today we're going to get started looking at all of the items in uh, the FAA's regulations Appendix D of Part 43, which lists the scope and detail of an annual inspection. So we're going to go get started with that on Little Blue. So if you remember, I printed off a sheet from the Cessna 12140 website uh, that really does a good job of showing what to inspect on this aircraft. It's been designed and built using 43 Appendix E, and it has beyond the scope of 43 Appendix E, which is good because it's got specifics for this aircraft that need to be inspected. And it kind of explains that rather than just saying inspect this part like Appendix D does because it's a general guidance for annuals. Having already completed the pre-inspection, which included running the aircraft, it was time to continue on with the engine, which was the next part of how I have broken down this annual inspection. These sections will help you keep track of where we are in the process. One of the things that you should make sure during an annual inspection is that the markings are correct on all of your instruments. Um, and we just got done with our pre-inspection, uh, kind of the static items on here, uh, the engine marking, stuff like that. Um, so now we're ready to move into the engine area. And the engine area should be pretty uh, straightforward. Already ran the engine, got it running. So I'm just gonna look for just general wear and tear, anything that I might wanna replace um, on it, anything else I might wanna replace on it. And uh, yeah, just to make sure that everything on this list functions so that way it's legally complied with an annual per Appendix D. Even though I'd already checked the majority of this, I went ahead and checked all of the engine's throws for the throttle and the mixture, making sure that they hit the appropriate stops as well as were lubricated and free moving. And then I began to systematically check everything on the annual checklist for this engine. I know that I've probably said this multiple times, but it's critical to use a checklist during any inspection, but especially an annual inspection, to make sure you have not missed any item uh, and to have a systematic way of walking through every component on the engine, airframe, uh, and any other specific item that needs to have a inspection done on it during this. One of the things that I'm really interested in doing on this inspection is replacing the air filter, which is this older style air filter with a newer bracket air filter. I've heard mixed reviews about why the brackets are better or worse, but personally I think I'm just gonna go with something that filters a little bit more aggressively uh, than one of these older style cotton filters. Even though I'm on the engine part of the inspection, I began working these engine controls and the mixture cable seemed to be stiffer than I remember leaving it during the pre-run. So I got under the panel, began looking around and started seeing some things I wanted to tidy up or tie up with zip ties. Uh, and it, One thing led to another and I just began to pull parts and components off until I took the yoke off and pulled even the little navcom that was on the right side of this aircraft out. Thinking about repainting these accent trim parts as well as cleaning up these yokes to make them look a whole lot better before we get done with this annual inspection. Uh, 
All right, now I've got the shroud off so I can visually inspect this entire uh, muffler here from the exhaust manifold. So I'm going to take a look at it, but honestly it doesn't look like anything's leaking, so uh, I'll just double check, make sure, and uh, go on to the next one, put these guys back on. Even though I was on the engine, I did keep on getting distracted by little things that either annoyed me or that I sort of followed a rabbit down a hole. This one, uh, this door has since the beginning of this project not locked correctly. So here I'm going to go ahead and repair the internal components that are bent. Uh, ended up straightening everything back out and now the door is functioning correctly. think what I'm gonna do is I'm about halfway through the third page of these I think it's like eight pages of inspection items and uh, everything's gone good so far I uh, found a couple things that I need to address it looks like the primer line was leaking the o-ring in that is broken uh, so I've jotted that down um, I think I'm going to try to see if I can't get the bracket version of this air filter. Uh, it's a replaceable filter, so it's kind of, it's not annoying or anything. It's just, I feel like it's going to do a lot better since it's sacrificial than something that you like rinse out with gasoline and hose down or, uh, or blow out. So yeah, I think I'm going to replace this with a bracket filter. So those two items I need to look up when I get home back to the house and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I know that last time we wrapped up working on the store and kind of pulling way more off that panel than I initially thought I was going to. I kind of got distracted when the controls were not lubricated or were not moving uh, smoothly. So I fixed that, cleaned out the um, lines, kind of got some of the grease and grime out of them um, and worked them until they were loose. And then I started looking at the panel and I do have issues with the radios in there. So I went ahead and pulled those out. Um, but to be honest, we were on the engine uh, when we got distracted with all that. So today we are going to wrap up by putting some oil back in the engine. It will be done. I'll have to uh, torque the spark plugs later, but I'm going to go ahead and leave them out because I want to pre-oil this thing just like we did last time, just to make sure that there's no chance that we accidentally put excessive wear on this engine when we go to run it after annuals. So let's move on to the prop. One of the things that you want to look for on a propeller at annual um, is to make sure that there's not any excessive nicks. And uh, I'm just going to do some inspections here, make sure that everything looks good. It's uh, fortunately a simple propeller. It's just one fixed pitch prop, one solid piece. So you can kind of see right here, there's a decent size um, nick in this uh, propeller that I'm going to try to dress with a file uh, and so I was going to show you guys that. So the key here is when I'm taking this off I want to be feathering it out uh, per 4313 to where there's a certain distance that I've got to feather this out based on its depth. So I am just slowly taking it out and I'm also kind of feathering out that repair to a wider section so there's not a sharp little uh, place that could cause another nick. All right, now that uh, is pretty well removed and you can see that it is um, a lot smoother. There's still a little bit of a a taper there but it is smoothed out now there's no sharp points where a crack could form and I could have uh, blade failure in flight so now I'm going to take a piece of uh, basically scotch-brite 
uh, something that's just going to be much more fine and I'm going to polish out these micro cracks that you can see in this where I've filed it and it's just left really coarse spots. One of the things I'm hoping to be able to do during the repair video is borrow the propeller balancer from my work and be able to dynamically balance this prop, especially now that I've had to dress it up. So the bowl looks like it just needs to be cleaned out. It's just got oily residue on the outside of it. And the seal we're gonna replace. All right, that is what we're looking for right there. So we finally got that all cleaned up. Bowl completely cleaned out. Uh, filter really looks good. Um, it didn't have many contaminants in it. And I think what was there is just maybe a little bit of stuff back when I flushed out the fuel system before I even tried running this thing. That's what a good looking gas escalator or fuel strainer should look like. I guess technically this is both a fuel strainer and a gas escalator, except it's a uh, manual like a wing nut gas cleaner here. Mmm, my favorite flavor. I've got the first five sections now completed. We just finished up the fuel system. Tomorrow, if I have time and can come back up, we're gonna get started with the landing gear and that will probably take several hours because I plan on pulling the wheels off, greasing the bearings, actually inspecting them, make sure they look good. And then I probably, after that, will go straight into the airframe and the airframe will be the largest section just because of the inspections that I wanna do to make sure that these wings are good and all of the structure, both from airworthiness directives, like we talked about, and uh, just from its how long it sat. I want to make sure there's no corrosion that I have to worry about. Thankfully I'm in a hangar uh, and it has been in storage inside so I haven't seen any indications of corrosion yet. We'll just take a look at it tomorrow. So not only am I inspecting this area here uh, inside of the uh, landing gear there, but I'm also looking in here with a light and mirror at the uh, where the gear itself actually mounts to the structural part of the aircraft that gives us its structural integrity.
I am uh, going to jack each of these sides up independently, uh, and I'm going to use this jack pad that I got from the Cessna 12140 Association offline that has been fabricated. Somebody just welded it together, um, and it's a perfect fit for these gear. So I really like it. It fits right in here on the back side of the gear and goes right up the side of your hydraulic line, your brake line, without damaging it. Let's go ahead and get her off the ground. I made sure that this thing is free spinning. Last thing you'd want to do, take your wheel off and your jack being a location that you cannot actually access. I'm going to take it off, put the jack stand under it, and then we will keep on going. Jacking is one of the most dangerous things in aviation. Every year there are at least one or two accidents involving either a training scenario or in the field where someone inappropriately jacked an aircraft. So it's incredibly important that you follow your aircraft's uh, instructions for how to jack as well as um, use some common sense and take your time during the process. Getting into these landing gear really does showcase how far in depth an inspection goes. Looking at this, I was looking for pits and corrosion and anything that would show me whether or not the race or the bearing needed replacement as well as the wheels overall integrity. Fortunately, nothing looked damaged and there weren't even any minor issues to address. All right, so from what I've read on these 140s, it's really critical to take this step off and make sure it's not rusted underneath here because apparently that can get neglected. So I'm gonna release this, pop it off, and we'll see what we've got. It's just a little bit dirty, but I mean, overall, it's doing its job. This piece right here, the spacer, a little bit of dirt in there, but hey, it's a tailwheel airplane. That's when you know you've had some fun time. I am gonna pull the tail wheel off. It's not locking. Um, it's free spinning all the way around. So I'm gonna chalk the plane, uh, put it back up on the sawhorse um, under one of the bulkheads, and then just take the tail wheel all the way off, take it apart, and just go ahead and see if it's something's broke or the casing's cracked. I know that these Scott 3200s will on occasion crack. Um, the actual case itself cracked. But um, I'm hoping it's just either the pin is broken or uh, this, the horn, uh, the notch in the horn is messed up. So let's take a look at it. This is what's causing that tail wheel to pop. So uh, facing this direction is towards the front of the plane. You can tell by the little grooves that's worn in the horn here. Um, but anyway, so when I, the tail wheel, the back side of the wheel turns to the right, it locks into place. So if I try to, for example, so let's say this thing's still and I turn the wheel to the right, eventually it locks and it stays, which is what it's supposed to. But you can see this little ledge right here, when I turn it to the left, it catches for a second and then slips right past. So the other side, it's locked in place. Other way, on this side, it immediately just releases. Uh, and just looking at it, it looks like that it's because that ledge right there is a tad bit worn out. So I'm gonna be buying another one of these. Another few days behind getting this annual completed, but um, the video for 
uh, repairing this stuff more than likely will come out after uh, the video um, that I'm going to release inspecting and finding these problems. I'm just going to order the part and when it comes in I'll put it back up on the sawhorse and pull it off, put a new one in, go from there. Getting ready to start the airframe here on the Cessna 140 and uh, the first major component is going to be to basic and overall look at the exterior and then I'm going to jump into it looking at the structure on the inside. Uh, I'm going to get a flashlight and um, a uh, inspection mirror. We'll take a look at all of the structural components, the ribs, the bulkheads, um, all the things that are inside that I can't really see from the outside. And if those look good, we're going to keep on going with probably cleaning out the inside. I brought a shot back up today and we're going to do some vacuuming and uh, try to get this airframe done in the next day or two. And we will just about be done with this annual. So I get to climb back in here and inspect, make sure everything is clean and structurally still looks good. I'm going to have to inspect these cables, check their tension. Uh, check the pulleys, stuff like that. So that's what we're doing next. Oh, wow. Yeah, nothing like finding a little mouse tucked away in the back of your plane. Stuart Little has been dead for a while, unfortunately. Although I guess fortunately for me. Ugh, getting rid of this thing. I'm going to wash my hands. I've got this inspection panel removed off of the backside of uh, the strut that supports the wing. Um, in here you can see the drag wires. In our AD list that we made a few weeks ago, I had a AD to look at these drag wires. And so you can kind of actually see right there is one of those drag wires. You can see it's it in its shadow right there. And so all I'm doing is going through and making sure that none of these are broken, um, that they all are still strong, good structural integrity, and making sure that the end of it has not broken. So that way it will give some stability uh, to the wing itself, so. Honestly, it's incredible to me that this airplane 75 years ago was put together and I know that a lot of these parts have been replaced and a lot of things are not the way they were in 1947 when this thing was first built, but it is still amazing to me that um, 75 years later, three quarters of a century, it is still functioning properly and I'm now the caretaker of this piece of history. And Now that I've gotten into this and I see that everything does look good and that things are great for flying this thing. it's as, it, as, as that's approaching, I don't know, I'm feeling more, uh, more excited, uh, more anticipation.
So it looks like there might be a little bit of a rat's nest inside of this wing. Thankfully, it looks like it's just insulation pulled out of the barn here. So uh, it's time to bring in the big guns and get it out. I know that it might be a little bit unnerving to hear that there's a nest or something inside of the wing, but it's actually more common than you might think for us to find a bird's nest or something that's been trying to build a living habitat inside of the wing of an aircraft. There's just too many little nooks and crevices for things to get in to make it completely impervious to animals. And so part of the inspection is to make sure that no external critters have made a nest uh, and if they have to remove it and make sure there was not any residual damage. I traced it back to where I believe the mouse was getting in and like I said, fortunately, it looks like it was insulation out of the barn and not anything native to the aircraft. So I continued to inspect to make sure there were no residual issues, uh, but I think right now everything's taken care of and it's something I'm just gonna monitor a lot more closely as I go to fly. With each individual component of the airframe now complete, I really only have two things left. An ELT check and a post inspection run up. Unfortunately, I've got uh, just a couple things in front of the aircraft today here in the hangar um, and I cannot get it out. I am going to be on break all this coming week. Uh, and so today I'm just trying to get this annual wrapped up uh, and then over the next few days, I'm going to be doing those uh, repairs, installing that uh, bracket air filter. All of that just got in uh, the other day. So um, I'll get my bracket air filter installed. I'll get my new tailwheel component installed and uh, the new landing light, a few other things. Once I've got all of that done, I am planning on rolling it out and doing a post check run up, um, making sure there's nothing I need to double back and, and work on again and then it'll be time to sign it off and uh, prep to fly out of here. So let's get right into this ELT. Per FAR 91207A, each 12 calendar months an ELT should be inspected just to make sure that it is emitting a signal strong enough to be able to notify ATC that the aircraft has been in an accident in the event that it unfortunately does need to be used. Look at that. All it is is a bunch of, I guess, double A batteries. Yeah, double A batteries lined up, connected, and poured in epoxy. But because somebody's got a PMA stamp on it or a TSO, they're allowed to uh, charge 50 bucks for about $7 worth of batteries if they were great batteries. The particular ELT that I have in this aircraft is technically not even allowed to be used on new installations anymore, but it is acceptable for this aircraft because it was installed prior to that change date. A lot of times these ELT inspections don't have to be with the annual, but because they both are 12 calendar months, it just makes it simple to have both of them done concurrently while the aircraft's in the shop. If you are looking for more information about doing an ELT inspection, you can look up Advisory Circular 91-44 Alpha, and that's going to give you some information on how to do the inspection. So to test this thing out, um, typically you can either have it tested at like a radio shop or bench tested, I guess is what I would call it, to where you have a radio that you have the capability of monitoring 121.5, which is the frequency that this thing should be emitting um, its activation sound. I don't even know what to call that disgusting tone that it makes. But nonetheless, this thing is going to put out a uh, kind of a, uh, a warbled noise. Um, no, I'm not gonna do it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Anyways, so to test it, you wanna make sure that that's working. Cause yay, great, it's got a new battery in it, but I don't know for certain that it's still working. Uh, I've inspected it. It looks old, but it's not rusted on the inside. So components still should be working good. 
I've already checked the uh, inertia impact um, lever to make sure that it will activate it. Um, now it's just a matter of making sure that it does put out a tone. So to do this, you wanna make sure that you are not testing these longer than about three cycles of that noise. Uh, and you also wanna do it at the beginning of every hour. So the top of the hour, the first five minutes of it. I am trying to rush to get this done because I am quickly approaching the end of that time. Uh, but we've still got a minute or two here, so I'm going to go ahead and activate this. That's just so ATC doesn't think that uh, there's actually been an accident. So let's activate it and listen for the tone off of the radio. And so, yeah, this is working. This is correct. It's doing what it's supposed to. We're good to go. ELT is complete. So the last thing that I'm going to do here is these ELT batteries, uh, even if you don't use them, they're not guaranteed or good forever. So I'm going to affix a sticker that comes with them onto the side of my ELT, giving me the date that it's next due to be replaced if I do not use it. Uh, or if it's not turned on, left on accidentally more than an hour since then. Per 91207, uh, and I forget the specific number inside of it, but it's 91207, we have to look at these. That's why I'm doing this inspection. Um, it hasn't been done for a while, so I do need to, to make sure everything's functioning properly, and it is. Um, we tested it in the first part of that hour, and so we're good to go. I'm going to install this back in the aircraft, and this annual, as far as the inspection, is officially complete. So I know that this has been a incredibly long video. I really thought about breaking it up, but to be honest, I've already got this annual broken down into probably four videos by the time I fix these components that I found that are messed up. And the main thing is I just want to take care of this bracket air filter and the, the uh, tail wheel and make sure the landing light, everything's sorted out with that. Um, and for the most part, this plane looks really, really good. So hopefully this week while I'm off, I will be able to get everything put back together and run it a few times here on the ground and start planning for that first flight out of here. Uh, really excited, anticipating getting to fly this aircraft again for the first time. And it's been such a rewarding journey for me. Um, honestly, I can say that I have learned a ton uh, just by doing a project like this, and I'm not done yet. Uh, I do think I'm gonna hold off on the panel. Um, I know I debated it back and forth in this video, but I think I'm going to just leave it the way it is currently, uh, just clean it up, make it look better. Um, do a few little minor things, but uh, I think I'm going to hold off on an avionics upgrade for right now. Uh, have a possibility of maybe working with somebody in the future on uh, having a, a professional go in and do an upgrade on this panel. So I really do appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully the next time I see y'all on this project, it will be to finish the installation and sign this annual off. And then shortly thereafter, we're going to get ready to uh, go punch some holes in the sky with this thing. <laughs>